three, two, one. Now it's three, two, one. Okay. okay. Yeah. Welcome to Bonus Action, a Duels and Mana Dorks supplement podcast. I'm Connor. And I'm Sam. We are the Dungeon Bros, but we are not brothers. Nor are we in a dungeon. And today, for one, this is the first time we've actually named this little bonus thing that we do. Yeah. Which is pretty neat. But today we are with our friend Randy over at the Forged Realms. Wonderful TikTok friend. Hello, Randy. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for inviting me. Of course, of course. We already had the classic podcast stop and restart because reasons. That's how life works. I blame the cat for playing with the cables at this point. Yeah, sounds good to me. That Totally fine with me. Totally fine with me. But, uh, Randy, we were getting into uh, the, the journey of how we actually met in person, because you invited us to a private playtest from Loot Studios at Gen Con this last year in August. Uh, we got to playtest their upcoming Relics Untold. It was like a... We, from my perspective, it was like Magic the Gathering meets 40K or Wargaming or something. Yes. We yeah. just wanted to... I mean, more importantly, more for us in our personal lives, because uh, this is the one that gets brought up all the time. Is it's, it's when we met Mass Mer- It's when we met Matthew <laughs> Mercer, and uh, thank you for that. That was we're putting that entirely on you. Yes, we uh, we owe you our loyalties and lives, probably. Yes, indebted <laughs> for sure. Mm-hmm. So, I just want to say from our perspective. Like, we roll up there, we do a play test, and I just go to the bathroom and happen upon a Matthew Mercer. But you actually had a little bit of insight into this, and I just wanted to hear what your side of the situation was there. Because we've told it on the podcast before from our situation. Okay, okay. So this is uh, such a funny story, honestly, because um, originally I had started kind of talking with Loot Studios uh, probably a month or two in advance of Gen Con. And it was, you know, talking about potential partnerships, doing some videos and stuff like that for them. And then they're like, hey, we're coming to the States. We're going to be at Gen Con. We just seen a video of yours. You're going to be at Gen Con. Do you want to come do a private play test of this new game? Um, we'll tell you more about it. But you got to sign an NDA. And I'm like, okay, cool. So I didn't think I could say much or do much about it. And then they're like, um, well, actually, let's make this a private play test. And can you maybe invite some other friends that would potentially like this? And as they start describing it, and I immediately thought, man, this is kind of a mashup of Magic the Gathering, 40 Hammer, you know, um, a little bit of D&D, you know, kind of get some of them classes involved and stuff like that. And so I started kind of going through my mutual list. I stumble upon you guys and I'm like, oh, yeah, this is like a perfect little mashup here. Um, so I'm <laughs> glad that you guys reached back. And, you know, we had a lot of fun people that did show up to that. And I remember... Uh, Going to the mall, which is where this was at, it was not even on where Gen Con was. It was a couple blocks mm-hmm. away, and we had went earlier, so we kind of knew like where we were going, what we we're doing. And I'm like trying to organize like a dozen people <laughs> to get there to this weird spot in the mall. And you guys had gotten there early, so we show up. I'm we're running down. Prop. We, yeah, we exactly. <laughs> and so you guys were waiting at the door. I remember that. And I come down that escalator. We ring that doorbell. Like It's like no one was coming. And then someone walks up, and they were just almost rude, you know, just very like, can I help like, you? Yeah, you guys why are just standing are you here? here. No, no. You, there's no reason. <laughs> there's no reason for you to be here. here. Yeah. yeah. Go go away. This isn't Gen Con. It's like, no, we have a, we have a thing, like, here. Basically, I'm like, I, I promise wait. you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we had to like wait for the Loot Studios guys, didn't we? We did because I was like, no, no, we're like in the back behind the kitchen. We're we're in those back rooms. He's like, let me go check. And then he comes back. He's like, there's no one there. Like, go away. <laughs> yeah. Around at least. And I'm like, wow. All right. That's quite the interaction. At that point, I think um, a couple other folks had showed up, kind of walked yeah. up to us. And then I'm messaging Loot. They show up. So finally, we all get in. People start getting together. We start the game kind of announcement piece. And then I walk back into the kitchen area, and I think we were getting some beers and stuff for everybody. And mm-hmm. uh, the CEO of Loot Studios come walking up, and he's like, hey, I need to find my um, business cards. I'm talking with uh, Roll20, drive through RPG CEO, um, just kind of discussing some stuff. They actually have role, or Critical Role over here somewhere. And I'm like... <laughs> Oh, oh, shoot. Oh. Okay. So I've already been to this place before. So I'm like, where's the common area? That's the bathroom. Mm-hmm. And it's like all like glass doors. And mm-hmm. 
So I just kept going back and forth from the room to the kitchen <laughs> to, to, to like looking at the bathroom in that common area. And I'm like, are they up front? Are they? And there's like a restaurant, I think, that shares that bathroom. So I actually yeah. think they were in that restaurant piece. There must have been like a private room by there. Mm, that makes sense. And I'm like, man, I don't want to cause like chaos, but if I spot him, I will tell everybody, right? And so yeah. it happened to be a moment in time that I go back in. I think I'm sitting on the couch and I just walk out and you come around the corner and you're like, Matt Mercer's in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so here's what. Okay. So the CEO of Loot Studio, I, we were playing a lot of water that day because it's gen con and i don't want to die hydrate before you dehydrate hydrate and exactly just like grandy is right now hydrate we, i think we all have our hydration, hydration. yes indeed here we go so <laughs> i'm drinking i'm drinking and i'm like i really really need to go to the bathroom and um oh my god what was his name he was sat next to me he went to the bathroom with us oh stronghold stronghold dnd &D. Yes. he was sat next to me and I just kind of looked at him, and I could see that same kind of look on his face of like, like the little squirmies of like, you need to go, to the, need to go potty. And <laughs> so I'm like, hey, is it cool if I get up and run to the bathroom? And the the CEO was like, oh yeah, I need to too. And then Sean was like, yep, me too. And then the three of us we went and we went to the bathroom. We get to there. There's only one urinal, and it's occupied. And so, like, I'm like, I don't need to go that bad. Stronghold's clearly, like, having a moment. So he runs into the stall, and he starts going. And then I'm like, I'm, like, kind of chit-chatting with the, with the Loot Studios guy. And I'm like, I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, this guy looks familiar at, at the urinal. I don't know quite what. And then flush, and then the step back and the turn. And I'm like, oh, that's the silhouette of Matthew, one, if Matthew Mercer. One Matthew M. Mercer himself. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> And I think I said that out loud, and it kind of startled him. And he was like, oh, sorry, I didn't know there were a bunch of people waiting. We're like, oh, no, it's totally fine. You're Matt Mercer. He's like, yes, yes, I am. I'm like, I'm not going to talk to you. I said this out loud to him. I'm like, I'm not going to talk to you in a bathroom because I don't want to be that guy. And he just started laughing. And then the Loot Studios guy was like, oh, my God, Matthew Mercer. And he's like, oh, God, hold on. And then, like, starts chit-chatting with him while he's washing his hands. And then they go step outside and talk. And then I'm, I'm at the urinal. And Stronghold's like, what's going on out there? Because I don't think he was paying attention. And I'm like, it's crazy that I just met Matthew Mercer when he was peeing. And he's like, what? <laughs> that, that was, I was like, yep, go outside right now. And then he like flushed. I think he did the quick like water on, hands under, water off, run out <laughs> ma maneuver. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And I think I texted Sam. I don't remember if I texted. I don't think you texted me. I didn't. Uh, I, I was too I, excited. Yeah, I was too excited. So Stronghold and I are there, and I'm like, uh, 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 oh fuck! I left my phone in. The That's why I didn't text you. I left my phone in because I was using it to keep count of life in the game, and so I'm like, Stronghold, will you please take the picture picture of me and him, and then you can send it to me, and then I'll get the I'll hold it and take the picture for you of you and him, and it'll be like a whole thing, and. <laughs> He was like, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. So we like did a little bit of idle chit chat with Matt. And we're like, can we get a picture? We got our pictures. Uh, we come back and wanting wanting to hook my bro up. I'm like, all right, how do I let Sam know that Matt Mercer is in the bathroom without letting the entire room know that Matt Mercer is in the bathroom? And I look at him and, and I I'll say, preface this and say, he did it wrong. I did. I was trying to do it subtly. I look at him and I say, Sam, you need to go to the bathroom. And he was like, from ten feet away. You need to go to the bathroom. And then he was like, no, I don't. <laughs> no, Look, no I, I don't. <laughs> no, I don't want to say I don't trust you. I don't trust anyone, uh, especially when they're yelling at me to go to the bathroom from 10 <laughs> feet away. And, I, and I, I run up to him and I'm like, Matthew Mercer is in the bathroom. Go to the bathroom. And I think you it I went, at, oh. oh, and then you got up and left J just like that. He got up and left. And then when he left the room, I was like, I sat down. And I was still like kind of wide eye and stronghold, I think, was like chit-chatting with someone about it. And I'm like, I'm going to announce this to the room, but I also don't want to blow up his spot. And I just wanted to help my guy out. But Matt Mercer's in the bathroom if anyone wants to head on out there. <laughs> and then people were like, what? And I was like, I'm being very serious. And then everyone got up and walked out. <laughs> <laughs> I I had caught you right as you had come from the bathrooms, coming through the kitchen, and I was in that kitchen area. So then you yeah. went back into the room to get him, 
And at that point, I've V-lined, right? And I catch him yeah. outside the bathroom and stop him. And I remember getting to talk to him for a little bit. I go to take a picture, and it's still on, like, video. And so I have, like, a three-second video of us, like, freezing, then him going, oh. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and, and I just remember, like, I was so, like, shaky that even my photo I have of him is just, like, a blurry, Blurred. you know? Yeah. And I'm like, ah. Yeah. Oh. Um, but it was so he was such a nice guy and he he took it all in stride so nice. because when I turn around there was the entire line of all of us right and then yeah. I don't know were you guys there for Travis no Travis we, showed up after we had... I was gonna say we we went back got our stuff and we're like all right it's time to go I think we yeah uh, we we talked with you and um, a couple other people and we're like all right let's go back and meet our friends and tell them we met matt Merth matt mercer yeah <laughs> and we didn't find out until like later that night when people were posting photos on instagram because we got to a couple of people's instagrams yeah and we saw we're like literally Fuck. five minutes later <gasps> hello there friends <laughs> <You're>... <laughs> we're we're clipping That's... we're gonna clip that now you definitely should <laughs> <laughs> that's like that uh what was the like news reporter guy and he's like getting interviewed yes. his child comes in his wife's like oh <laughs> like, diving in <laughs> uh so I love that. it was so great because i don't know my cameras uh it was probably like an hour later after everyone had kind of dispersed and we were just kind of hanging out having a few beers mm -hmm. we had like a dinner arrangement a little later so we we're just killing time and I got up to go use the restroom and boom, run in right into Travis, right as he's coming out the door. And he's a tall guy. I, I'm a tall guy, but yeah. he's a real tall guy. And it's like, oh, oh yeah. yeah. And he's wearing this like Jack Skeleton uh, hoodie, you know, and like that's almost just like what I run into. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you're Travis. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I am. And I'm like, oh my gosh, can I get a picture? He's like, yeah, 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 of course. And uh, I think I was showing him. Um, he had asked, like, what I do. I was telling him, like, oh, yeah, I do, like, TikToks, Instagram reels kind of stuff. And I showed him one of my videos, and he's like, I've actually seen this before. And, like, we're watching the video, and he's like, is this the one with, like, the blue dragon and the ship and the moving water and stuff? Right as it's coming on, I'm like, Travis uh, has seen my uh, video. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, yeah, I get tagged and stuff like this all the time. I'm like, I figure you guys get tagged in all kinds of crazy stuff. So who knows what you actually ever see? But oh that, yeah, that was yeah. definitely a highlight from Gen Con for sure. Oh, for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. The the little the nice little like epilogue story to this is we're walking out and then we were both just like. <sighs> What? <laughs> and then we like have our little freak out on the street, which is great. Yeah. Um, then we take our pictures and we send them to the group chat of all of our friends that we went with to Gen Con. And we're like, yeah, so the Loot Studios thing was cool. Send. And they're like, what the fuck was that? And they're like all freaking out. And our friend, our friend Lincoln, uh, we all get in a car and we're driving back to our Airbnb. And he's like, I fucking hate you guys so much. You met Matt. I, oh, he was like so mad. That we met Mavers. <laughs> the best part of that, the best part of that for me is that uh, whenever I went to Gen Con, I was in like a Discord group with like a hundred plus creators, and we all kind of went mm -hmm. together, had all these events for like meetups. And so leading up to this, before I'd ever even reached out to you guys, I'm like, I'm gonna put this out in the Discord and see if anyone wants to do this play test. And of that yeah. like hundred plus group, there was probably maybe three people that joined in on it that were interested everybody else i had personally just messaged to come come join so as soon as we got done and i had pictures with travis and matt i uh, <laughs> immediately post it in the discord and i'm like <clears throat> so that loot studios thing was really cool and they're like wait what, <laughs> when did you meet him i'm like yeah remember that play testing no one wanted to do <laughs> i love that now love the, that. now you're gonna be the most popular guy and they're never going Literally. to uh they're never going to reject an offer from you again right <laughs> Absolutely. We we got invited to that Discord at Gen Con from uh, Beardick. Yes, yes. Beardick, Beardick, yeah. Beardick GM. And because he was like, are he you stayed with us, like, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was with us. Uh, Dan to DM was with us for a little while. The Role Playing Degenerates guys were with us. It was a really good time. Um, we're probably not going to do that again because uh, to get an Airbnb to fit all of us, it was like 40 minutes away. Yeah. So, not going to do that again next year, but we're definitely going to invite a bunch of people to come hang out with us. Um, 
Okay, fine. We'll get to the actual Relics Untold stuff. So, like, how did that sort of inter... Like, the, the little conversation with you and Loot Studios come about? Because you've got their whole Loot Studios, like, stuff in your link in bio. It seems like you guys have been doing stuff together for a little while. I just want to curious, like... How yeah. that came about. So it it actually honestly started. Um, I did a video where I printed out one of their um, treasure golems, and mm. I blew it up really big, and I basically converted it for my game to a horde golem. And so I painted it up, I put it on the digital table, and that video blew up, and it caught their attention. And at that point, they then like became a mutual on TikTok, which at the time they didn't have any many. And I'm like. For me, I've only done the social stuff. Like, it's coming up on two years in April. So at the time that that had happened, I had, was under a year, I think. And I'm like, man, I've been subscribing to these guys since well before I ever did social stuff. So this is just, like, a really cool moment. And then they started reaching out to me, like, um, hey, would you want to meet up, maybe do a collaboration of some sort? And so I'm thinking, yeah, do another print or, you know, something. And so I get on this conference call, and I meet uh, Matteo. And mm -hmm. he's been, like, my main contact over at Loot um, since then and just such a fantastic guy. Like, I'm, I'm happy to say that we've become really good friends from this whole experience. And I think it started out with, like, um, I had recently did um, a D&D &D game with my nephews, nieces, and my oldest daughter. And um, they're like, I really like your, like, family stuff that you do with it. Um, would you want to do something with that with loot? And I'm like, yeah, I, I could probably do something along those lines. And then one of the other guys that was with him is like, hey, we've got this Relics Untold, um, this really cool game. Maybe we can get you in on that, and you can do some footage at Gen Con for it. And I'm like, perfect. And then they're like, uh, could, do you want to invite more people? Maybe we'll just do another additional day and do private playtesting. And that's when I started reaching out to everyone. And from all of that, so none of that was paid anything that was just really becoming friends with them. Um, in the next month in October, that's when I did the uh, their big ghost ship that they had released. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. This this big boy actually. Ooh. Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh yeah, that's nice. <laughs> so that I is gnarly. So that was a really cool like collaboration. It was just. Uh, the best experience and it really come full circle for me for someone outside of doing any content creation to kind of get into buddy up with one of the companies you've really valued over the years. That's awesome. That's awesome. So is like the 3d printing aspect and the painting and the creating of like physical terrain and stuff, what really got you into just kind of RPGs and making videos in general? Uh, so the way that I got into D and D was actually not until shoot 2019. So just before COVID I've always been very fantasy driven, uh, what, you know, through books and, you know, uh, movies, you know, stuff along those lines. And it wasn't until one of my best friends came back from college. He had been, he'd moved away for like eight years and he had been part of a giant campaign that is still going to this day. And at that time it was eight years long. And, uh, he's like, man, I'm really missing this. I'd really like to DM a game. Maybe if you can get some friends together, we can do it. And I've always wanted to play, just never had the opportunity, N never knew anyone that knew how to play, put it together, you know? Yeah. So I'm like, isn't that like the classic story of like, <laughs> it is, no, how do I play? How do I... Yeah. <laughs> you just got to know. Oh, one one just... Yeah. Just show up. It's fine. We'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember that it went from. Okay, get some people together. Let's play a D and D. To me, recruiting a bunch of people at work, including um, mm. I even got my wife to play that first game or two. She got about two sessions in, and she's like, "Nah, this ain't really for me." And I'm like, "Okay, that's cool." Yeah. <laughs> um, but <laughs> I I built the table that we use that weekend before we ever played, like the wooden table, um, and then I took apart like our office that we had and like turned it into a dungeon. Everyone cosplayed for <laughs> like the first two sessions, like we were like totally into it. And it just kind of progressed from there. Um, within a couple of years, I was wanting to DM and it kind of started through COVID watching videos. I had sold my house and me and my family moved in with my in-laws into their basement until we could get another house. And that was about four or five months. So that's four or five months that I didn't have my own space to do anything. And so I'm like watching YouTube videos. I'm like black magic craft. I'm watching him build Love terrain and stuff. And I'm like, this guy makes this look so fun and so easy. Like as soon as we mm -hmm. get a house, I'm building stuff. 
And uh, my DM actually became a roommate of ours when we bought our new house. And I'm just like tooling away, making ends and ships and all kinds of stuff. Not even for anything, because I wasn't DMing at the time. But that was where I got the bug. I enjoyed crafting and making things. And I'm like, all right, I've got to world build and start making my own stuff. Nice. Yeah. So you you said you made your gaming table. And you've shown off your gaming setup a myriad number of times on your TikTok, and it's beautiful. I've also made our gaming table. Yeah. I think um... yours is a lot nicer than <laughs> the one that I made. Um, no carpenter. Uh, and I've, I've also dabbled a little bit in the crafting, mostly just in a utilitarian sense. It didn't... It, I wanted to have the pieces. I didn't want to spend a lot of money on the pieces, so I made the pieces instead. Yes. Um, what would you recommend for someone that's like wanting to get into crafting or taking that next step of like m making their tabletop RPGs like a bit more serious if they feel like they're stepping beyond the bounds of what they know how to do uh, in the terms of like making furniture for, for gaming or for just tabletop purposes in general. I, I'm a huge fan of grab some foam and start making some stuff, right? Grab some popsicle mm -hmm. sticks. It doesn't have to look beautiful. Um, your players are going to appreciate whatever you put down on the table, to be honest. Um, but it has never been easier to get into, to afford, and just the accessibility of 3D printing. And there's so much access to even just free content for you to be able to print, whether it's miniatures you want to get into, and that I highly suggest, you know, resin printers. If it's just terrain stuff, and maybe you buy, like, the Whiz Kids like, you know, blind boxes or something, um, mm -hmm. you know, terrain FDM, perfect for that. Um, but you know, like my huge inspiration was Black Magic Craft. Like watching that stuff, it will give you the bug, and you're like, yeah. "Oh yeah, I could totally do this." Right? It's not as easy as he makes it look, but it is a oh, ton oh, of fun for sure. No, <laughs> like I'm not. A, I am not a crafter by any means. I, I, I've, I've tried because I, you, uh, when I moved in with you, mm -hmm. that's when uh, I started to kind of like, oh, I've been playing for D and D for a couple of years, and I was like, okay. Now that Connor has brought in, he's like, oh, we have pillars and we have we have like a fountain, trees, trees. I'm like, oh, and, and he's like, yeah, I'm Black Magic Craft. And I started watching the videos. I'm like, I'm going to try. I tried quite a few things and never in the remotely anywhere near as. Uh, you good. tried making the fountain mm -hmm. that I did too, because he got that's one that he made like a template for that you could get, and you basically yeah. just follow the template and you cut it out and you can slap that together and with just Dollar Tree foam and you had a time with that. It. It it's rustic. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, is, it is very rustic, but like the only things that I've really made, like I made a small set of the three by three tiles. Uh, I really liked the ruined walls, so I made a lot of the ruined walls. Um, that was like deep. In anything, and I'm mm -hmm. like, all right, well, I'll go. I'll and get a block of foam and then and a, a razor blade and i'm just gonna hack this thing up and see what happens um but it's really nice having like when, once you have your game room set up like a year or two later and you got the shelves up and you've got like here are all my <laughs> minis and then there's my like naturals shelf with like all the trees and here's the ruins and the brick it, oh, it's so satisfying it's it so absolutely satisfying. is <laughs> we should really play D D more to use all that yeah I have I, we I built a table. I haven't I didn't make a TikTok about it because that was before we were on TikTok by about a year, and I I, I took some pictures of it. I kind of want to go back and make something about it because we get asked about that table somewhat regularly when we're making videos about it, and we used it a lot for like a year, year and a half. Like we would host games. Uh, we had a group that we were both that you were the DM for. I was playing in. It was really good. I DM some stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, and now we're old. <laughs> the the classic aging aspect of uh, of the tabletop role playing game, making it a bit difficult to get people together. Yeah, or you'd be like Randy and just uh, organize his family into it. That's true. That's right. We don't have a we don't have family yet. So I've we're... I've got a group of guys that it was twofold. It was part of the first group that I ever played with as a player. And then my first group that I DM'd for, and now it's kind of a combined group, members of each that has been my ongoing um, Forged Realm like campaign. 
And uh, we're actually in the process right now of selling our house, uh, moving, you know, an hour and a half away and uh, kind of getting closer to family. And I'm like, man, what am I going to do? Am I going to start playing like online games? Like, and I've, I've done the online. It's not as fun for me as like in person. Yeah. It really isn't. Um, but I'm like, I can't just not finish this campaign. Like this campaign's got so much left in it. It's going to be yeah. sad. And I'm like, well, I'll just commute back and forth maybe. Can someone like... I don't know, take this table and stuff <laughs> at your house. <laughs> <laughs> so far, I haven't gotten a bite on that. And then I'm like, well, I could run games for like my nephews and stuff. I think that would be a lot of fun. But um, I don't know what that looks like in the future. So it's, we'll see. It's one of those, it's really difficult to find a group of people that are like really willing to bite and commit mm -hmm. as adults to yeah. like make time to do something, even monthly. Yes. Like, in my mind, the ideal kind of campaign setup is like one week where you pick a day and you play, and then two weeks where you don't. And then one week on, two weeks off kind of a vibe. And even something as, as relatively low commit as that is very challenging, even for me. Yeah. I think part of it is people, we all take this, take these hobbies, D&D &D and whatever else in the nerd area, uh, kind of seriously. Mm -hmm. And by that, I mean, yeah, we want to meet up and play where a lot of our friends that we've gotten, um, and Randy, I, I don't know if you've had the same experience, but where it's like, they're like, oh, yeah, I'll do it. I'm going to show up. Cool, cool. Be on my phone. Cool. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to proceed. This was a lot of fun. We're like, yeah, but you, you, didn't, you didn't put as much effort or care as, as we mm -hmm. kind of did. And that just like that level differentiation of effort and care not, mm -hmm. that, not that there's anything wrong with it, but I think that just is a, a big aspect of why a lot of groups fall apart. Mm -hmm. and I, th I think I think you're right with that, that there is a different level of commitment, especially from like a content creation or a dungeon master, mm -hmm. game master, someone who is actually dedicating time into the craft to someone who's going to show up once every few weeks, once a week, whatever, to, to play a game. And I absolutely have that. And that's the primary reason, like, I've never streamed my games, is my games are yeah. absolutely chaotic as can be. Um, recently, actually, one of the last games that my party got together for before my son was born, um, I had my friend uh, Vex Wild join as a surprise guest. And so we brought her in. I had the table streaming. We were all within Discord and I had her screened out so she could see everyone, they could see her, and she became a surprise BBEG. And we co-DM'd <laughs> in this epic fight, right? And we had it all planned out. And um, I was like, hey, you don't have to, like, log in until, like, this time. We've got recap. We've got a few steps before they even get to where they're going to be introduced to you. She was, like, so excited. She gets in early. She's hanging out for probably an hour and a half before we ever get to the spot. And it's, like, getting to it. And she's like, I didn't know you guys had started yet. <laughs> because, <laughs> because we hadn't met in, like, a month. And, you know, it's a friend group, too. So everyone wants yeah. to socialize and do stuff. And so then now we're getting serious. All right, we're getting into it. She starts in on this monologue. And, I mean, she ain't three sentences into this monologue. And one of my players is like, I'd like to hit her with a firebolt. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> and it was the greatest karma because she about wiped the floor with the entire party like they were on the brink of just total Perfect. party kill and i'm like th i'm just laughing i'm like this is fantastic <laughs> <laughs> uh so you know i think that um when we watch a lot of the live games the you know real plays like critical role things that have high production value you just don't realize from an outside perspective how much commitment everybody has involved in the, the creation yeah. of that as opposed to your personal games are not going to be that quality. Like, you're going to have a lot of fun. You can have great stories. You can have great miniatures and setups, but it's not always going to be, you know, high quality. Yeah, and some of that even goes into those shows. Before the show starts, they're having that conversation of, like, hey – when I'm starting to monologue, don't just hurl a fireball at me. Mm -hmm. Let me let let us get into it. Like buy in a little bit. Just suspend the disbelief. Even if you're even if you think your reaction or your character's reaction would mm -hmm. be like, ah, fuck this guy. I'm shooting him. <laughs> like let him get a little bit in. You know, let him cook a little. Just let it let the let the process develop. And a lot of a lot of players, and I would even argue a lot of DMs come from the background of like video games. Yeah, where 
like an NPC might be talking to them and you just kind of like run away <laughs> and then they just talk and the audio trails off and then they're done. You don't have to worry about it. You like, you move on to the next step or like you skip through dialogue and you just skip, skip, skip. All right. Now I want to go. Mm-hmm. And it just, it, it's, it's a lot slower of a game. Yeah. And a lot of people that like, Ooh, I want to try out D and want to try out Pathfinder, whatever. They don't realize that, I mean, you're committing to four hours <laughs> and a lot of it's just listening. Yes. Yeah. You know? It's it's a it's a really tough challenging act or balancing act here. Challenging act. Challenging balancing act. I'm able to speak, I swear. Um So you've talked you've talked about your home games a little bit. What kind of uh what what's what's kind of the future for Randy? You're moving the Forge Realm, the games are gonna be a lot a lot different. How is how do you think that's going to affect both like your content online and just like your personal gaming habits as you're going through this big adjustment? Yeah, it's been crazy and it's been hard to see exactly what that looks like. You know, uh, we had um, the birth of our son in October and I have not played D and D since then. You know, obviously I I told yeah. my party in advance, hey, I'm going to be taking some time just to spend with my family. And even before um, our third child came along, my wife's like, you know, we probably shouldn't play D and D every week. And I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. you know, there was definitely those conversations, <laughs> right? Um, and I'm like, okay, every other week, like two days a month is not too much to ask. And she's like, you know, we have two days off a week together, so that's, you know, eight days a month. You're asking for a third of those, like a quarter of those, like, uh, and I'm like, okay, I get it, I get it. So, yeah. you know, as we get older, um, we're not, we can't have as much time and family mm-hmm. becomes more important. So for me, where that focus is going to be is um, what content I can make available. So like I started a new series just here recently that's um, more focused 3D printing wise. It's going to take it takes less time for me creating content um, so that I can spend more time with my family, but still have some really cool stuff. So making really cool dice weapons, kind of like this yeah. hammer <laughs> that comes apart, you know, and I've got a ton of those and, and those have been doing really well. Um, getting back into painting. Um, I've never been a, I would not consider myself a professional DM, a professional painter, a professional 3d printer, like any of those things. I'm a hundred percent a hobbyist. And so I would like to continue to f- fine tune that craft. I would like to get better with painting and you know, those videos don't do as well. Like, and sure. it's just, you know, there's things you're going to slog through, but the yeah. whole reason I even started socials was honestly just to keep my natural procrastination in check. Um, because I'm really bad about picking up a project and never finishing it. Um, and I'm like, well, if I put it out on the internet and maybe 10 other nerdy friends that are like-minded like it, maybe that will push me. I never mm-hmm. expected it to get to where it's at now. And um, that almost kind of keeps pushing you forward, right? Um, I would eventually like to stream games. I would like to find a group to be able to to do streams mm-hmm. with. I think that may more than likely be less in person, probably more online, just because you can find people that are as equally committed to a story and a game through like creators like yourself. You know, if yeah. if, if we had a commitment to make something, I know what it's going to be. Right? We're not going to yeah. have the. <laughs> No, we we when we first started uh, both living together and then a year later uh, doing social, we talked about that. We're like, we really want to do it. Like, like we, we could stream a game. We could we could like we really want to meet at our house. And we were like trying to go through our friends and figure out who who we could find to commit the time and who we could find to like, you know, be down and probably like two or three months of work put into this. And then mm-hmm. we just kind of got to the point where it's like, yeah. Yeah, this isn't going to happen. It would be it would be us and then like a friend. Yeah, and then some that'd be like, eh, maybe, maybe not. It's, it's very, it is very, very challenging. And you, you brought up the natural procrastination. I feel like we both suffer yep. quite a bit from that. And yep. it's been, it's honestly been reflective in our content and just the volume of what we've been putting out and the amount of what I think it effort into yeah. what we've been putting out. Um, Leading into Gen Con this year, I feel like we kind of backed off a whole lot. We were getting really burnt out. Um, and honestly, the, an interview like this is us, is one of like our very first attempt of getting right, back on track. We're trying to get back on track with the plan because we're, start, we're starting to see that 
when we make when we do make stuff and there's been bursts throughout the fall where we've been making stuff and things have been going really well and honestly that has been driving us to want to get back into D D properly like mm-hmm. i have i want i've been wanting to run call of the nether deep ever since that book came out and i have not run a single session of call of the nether deep because i'm incapable of finding people to meet at home and i'm just like eh I'm giving up now, despite the fact that I have a lot of, like, old college friends that have been yearning to do, like, a Discord D&D game because we're all spread out now. And I'm like, it really wouldn't be that hard to just pop on and find, like, a good virtual tabletop and just do it. Yeah. You know? And it is so tough (laughs) to, like, (laughs) actually get up and do that. And it's like, we're working jobs and we're trying to do all this stuff. And it's like, how are we going to carve out time to do these things that we want to do? Yeah. And I'm sure for you, it's the same and even more difficult as you have other responsibilities and people living with you that rely on you and hats off. <laughs> Cause it's really fucking hard. It's uh, it's definitely been a challenge. Like I think before, before we had our son, like I've got two young daughters and, um, I literally would sacrifice sleep to make content and to do the crafting because really? that's that mm-hmm. was my enjoyment. I would average, you know, four hours of sleep, get up in the morning with my kids, watch them until my wife was off work. I would go to work. We worked opposite schedules so that uh, we didn't have to pay for child care because, my God, that's expensive. And, uh, you know, I'd come home and my entire family's asleep. And I would just come downstairs and just start crafting away and filming stuff. And, you know, that was enjoyable. But there there comes to a point where content creation almost takes too much of your time. You almost find yourself mm-hmm. on your phone entirely too much. And um, I know that where you were talking about around Gen Con time, like the end of last year, October-ish, we weren't the only ones. There were so many content creators that were backing off or just like, I don't yeah. know if I want to keep making this. Like, you know, I don't and it's you know it's not like there's necessarily huge financial incentives for us to make all this content to constantly put something out every single day um you know mm-hmm. s- sometimes you get a, a cool promotional deal maybe you get some free merchandise you know like hey i love free merchandise and oftentimes i'm like <laughs> hey <love> like this. <laughs> this free stuff was totally <laughs> worth this right yeah um, yeah but you know with the with the birth of my son i think it really kind of pulled me back into there's so much more than the social media piece. You know, my family's mm-hmm. important to me. So I need to find a way to carve out a healthy amount of time and then mm-hmm. dedicate that and not worry about what the numbers look like. Like, I, I just want to enjoy it. And as soon as I start losing the joy, I'll back off again. Um, yeah. But right right now, I'm really enjoying it. I'm enjoying my family. But we'll, we'll see where it goes. Yeah. For us, I feel like we got a lot of joy when we were interacting with people. Yeah. That were like minded. With like yes. we we had a series where like we hopped on and that's how we became good friends with like the role playing degenerates or um oh big velvet, big daddy velvet as we like to call him. Uh the Professor D DM or Professor D and D. Yeah, you can never I can never remember freaking he's, usernames, he's also man. Stopped, he's also stopped using socials yeah. after um, all the Watsy stuff from last yeah. year. Oh my gosh. All, that's... I don't even, I don't even want to get into that. We talk about it all the time on the podcast. Like every other week, there's some other massive Watsy thing. Yeah. It's driving yeah, it's, me crazy. It's really hard. And like people will ask me questions, you know, about like 1D&D and stuff. And it's like, you know what? I haven't looked into it. I don't necessarily feel driven to look into any of that. I'm, there's mm-hmm. so much supplement 5e stuff out there i could never play oh, yeah. a new version of D ever i could never give any money to watsi again and still continue to have fun and enjoy 5e the way it is and oh, that's yeah. kind of where i'm at with it and um, yeah we're big, we're big champions of that idea of like yeah you can play for D D 5e for the next 60 years without yeah. any new content based and and uh you know we have a lot of those books that we've never touched mm-hmm Mm-hmm. And it, it's even proving more true, like, in the wake of the OGL nonsense of them making 5th edition public domain. Like, now it's just, it's out there forever, and people can run hog wild with it more than they ever were able to. And it's only going to be more true that you don't have to buy into any of this stuff. And if you want new things, they release playtests regularly. <laughs> and you could just do that if you want official stuff. And all of that's free, and... I, I don't even want to get I, <laughs> unless unless you really want to talk about all the Watsi stuff. I 
it's like it's no, a, it's no a, sense to give them more yeah, airtime. You know what I mean? A <laughs> regular podcast we talk. It's like every time it's like, ooh, uh, MCDM's got his Kickstarter. He's doing his RPG. That's really cool. And Hasbro laid off eleven thousand or eleven hundred people. Mo- a it. lot of them from WotC, which doesn't make any sense because they're like the one part of Hasbro that makes money. <sighs> You know, the one thing, and I'll circle back to where we started, was Relics. Um, The one thing I'm really looking forward to when that's in full production, A, it it takes advantage of me enjoying 3D printing. You you know, you get Mm -hmm. to print out your army, you get to make all that stuff. Um, You've got your cards that are going with it. You've got kind of your magic piece to it. And it's a game that you don't have to prep two weeks for in advance and hope everyone shows up. You know, you can just literally put together and play. I had so much fun with that game. I I really Mm -hmm. hope it kind of takes off. It really was. One of the things that I was asking when we were doing that play test was, is this mini like is this miniature agnostic? Are you going to give like the the details of like, oh, the relics are this size and like units can only be like within this parameter of like physical size that the game requires? And they're like, Oh, absolutely. You can like any loot studio stuff, any normal miniatures totally works fine. And much like with 40K or any of these other war games where people, like, have their army, mm-hmm. like, people are going to make their relics deck and then have their little – have their units, and then they can just bring that in a box, and you can just go anywhere and play. It, I'm very excited for that to go into full production and actually get a proper yeah. chance to, like, sit down and play with it outside of a playtest environment and outside of a distraction of – the one, the only Matthew M. Mercer. I don't think his middle name is M. It just, it just makes it more entertaining to call him that. Matthew Matthew Mathistopheles Mercer. Mathistopheles is what we're going with. You know what? I, I this, is, this might be dumb and uh, about me, but um, <laughs> the thing I'm looking forward to is because it sounds like we're going to get some relics untold when relics untold releases. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to a full that. rule book. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm I'm excited to actually pull our rules. That was that was one thing is that we were like we were reading our cards and then we were playing the cards and we were like, there's an interesting interaction here and we don't know what the rule framework that we're working within to resolve this interaction and we would have to like constantly be calling people over to help us with the rules and it was like, oh yeah, this is the ruling. It's like, all right, cool. Would have loved like a little pamphlet, but you know, I'm I the rules of the game are shockingly simple. Mm-hmm. Yes. All things considered, it's very plug and play, very easy to pick up. Um, we we'll need to we we'll need to hit you up and do some relics games. Yes, absolutely. Um, they they have a simulator right now that. So before we even went to Gen Con, they have a Discord group currently set up for play testers, and so they were mm-hmm. unleashing. You know, here's this new basically commander and their army, and we'll now have this in the simulator. So I think I was just talking to uh, Matteo with Loot Studios here recently because he was wanting like a return on investment letter f- from me, and he's like, "Hey, I'm going to be off for like the next three weeks. Do you want to hop on the simulator and play some relics?" And I'm like, yes, I've been dying to play that <laughs> game for a while. Um, so let me talk to him. Let me see if I can get you in that group so we can use that Hell simulator, yeah, and then we could play together. Absolutely. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah. That would be great. That would be so fun. Um, Randy, do you have anything else that you want to talk about? Anything you want to pimp? Because I feel like we've had a nice little chunk of conversation here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, man, I don't really have... Uh, I've, I've been enjoying watching your guys magic um, content oh. I know you guys have been doing a lot bit more of that I catch your Monday uh, lives um, oh. w- when I can um, I started getting into magic um, by chance honestly it was because the original group of players that I played with for Dungeons and Dragons were all magic players and so mm-hmm. either before or after our D&D games they would all bring you know what I thought at the time was way too many decks of cards. Like, I'm like, well, where, where are you bringing all these, right? And uh, they would all play, sit down, play a few games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, just so every stack. every time it was like, well, Randy, do you want to play? And I'm like, well, I don't know how to play. Well, that's cool. We're playing Commander. It's super easy to learn. Pick a deck. Now, so I just picked a deck randomly, and then it was, I felt, you know, like an annoyance, like, well, what does this card do? What 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 does this mean? You know, and so we get a, through a few of those, and then I'm really enjoying it. And then I start winning games, you know, and it's just you know, by chance, it's just kind of how that rolls out sometimes. And then I remember oh, yeah. fi- buying my first like pre-con deck and like showing up to a session, be like, hey guys, 
I got my first deck. <laughs> 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 Let's play. And now I've got a whole bunch of decks um, and a bunch of cards, and I've still not built my own deck yet. I'm, I'm looking forward to, to that. I just got my group together um, Sunday, and we played a mm-hmm. few few rounds. And it was kind of funny. Um, one of the players who, in my mind, is like the magic guy for our group because he's got like, I don't know, I think he said 51,700-some cards. He's got them all tracked. And I'm like, Jesus. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, be- the best part is that probably, what, 51,000, probably – Forty nine and a half thousand of them are like five cents, yeah. never less. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he has it all like with its prices and everything, you know. Yeah. And, um, he's like every time he plays, he's just like, okay, um, I'm gonna play with this really weird deck, you know, and pulls out like I think he played a Kinder Egg deck. Um, <laughs> it was it was really interesting on how he got to draw cards and have us all. And I'm like, okay, that's interesting. And then he. Uh, it's about like midnight, and he's like, "You guys want to play a really quick game? I've got this uh, warrior deck that will make it like really quick." Mm-hmm. And I'm like, "Okay." We didn't finish that game till two thirty in the morning, and I'm like, "I thought this was supposed to be like a quick game," <laughs> uh, but my deck just kept like board wiping <laughs> everybody mm-hmm. and kept starting him over. Um, so that's been a lot of fun. So I hope to get uh, into Magic a little bit more. I'm still very much a rookie at this point. Hey, I mean, we kind of are too. We're, I feel like we're starting to ascend a little bit. We we were actually just talking about this earlier because we had game night last night with a couple of our friends, and uh, the the two friends we were playing with. I mean, we play every Monday, and because of that, we spend a lot of time thinking about it and being like, "All right, I don't want to lose on Monday." Yeah, necessarily again, <laughs> again. Um, and and so like yeah, consuming a lot of content and and spending way too much time just messing with cards and learning mechanics. And we were we were playing with them last night, and it was just like wow, yeah the 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 difference in just how we do our games nowadays, just like how you know efficient we have become at playing our own mm-hmm. turns, just understanding the game actions, yeah, and being mm-hmm. able to go through them in the correct order and resolve them quickly and effectively. And not just like, hey, I'm going to do this because fuck you. <laughs> it doesn't help me. <laughs> it's just going to make it go a little longer. But then at the same time, we still sit down next to our buddy who's been playing for literally over a decade and a half probably at this point. Mm-hmm. I can't remember how long Lincoln's been playing, but we played with him last weekend at uh, SCG Con. And it's like every time we sit down, he does something. I'm like, hold on, hold on, wait, go back, because I need to, I need to know. Hold on, you're going too quick. You're doing. You, you did 17 things in the time you it did, takes me to draw a card. You did 17 things. You drew 12 and a half cards. I don't know how you drew half a card. You like took the scissors out and chopped it up. I, it doesn't make a lick of sense, but sure, you win. <laughs> it also helps when you when you get more than two lands in a game. Yes. I kept oh a two-land hand. I kept a two-land hand, and those were the only two lands that I drew. I drew, like, 12 cards. No land. I was furious. Furious. Only game that that deck's lost, by the way. It's two for three. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, we would love it. When we, whenever we meet up again, if it's a Gen Con, whenever, bring some decks with you. Yes. We're going to... We're going to be probably getting an Airbnb that's closer to the convention hall, probably just us and our close friends, and we're going to have... I, probably we're going to definitely have a party night, but we're also definitely just going to have like kind of open door policy. Like, hey, we're heading home. If anyone wants to roll over and play some board games, jam some commander games, like what cool thing did you buy at Gen Con that you want to mess with? Like yeah. whatever that is, um, that would definitely be a very, very fun time. And I love that people are getting into magic. Feels like It feels like we got into this, into the TikTok game, as it were for Dungeons and Dragons and then slowly have been moving more towards magic as time has gone on. And then I look at a lot of other people and it's like, oh, a lot of people are doing, uh, had like a similar trajectory of like D&D into magic mm-hmm. or magic into D&D. Like the Venn diagram's not completely a circle. Yep. But it's like pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's definitely, I, I can see that. And like for me and my personal experience, it seems intertwined and interconnected and, um, oh, yeah. It's a fantastic game, and, and there's so many, like, obviously they're just pumping out so many cards. Like, every time you turn around, there's new sets, and everything's, everybody's so creative, right? Oh, my yeah. gosh, right? <laughs> right. Um, like, I still have a, um, whenever my original group was together, I had bought a 
draft booster box for our group to do a draft together. And uh, our party disbanded when my roommate moved away uh, again. And I still have it, like, unopened. And I'm like, God, I wonder if Tiamat's in there because it's a Forgotten Realms box. Oh, yeah. And, and, and so it's like all the time I'm like, do I open it or do I save it for a special occasion? Like, can I get a draft together someday? I don't know. It it's really tough. is. It's a very tough balance. The, the, the Forgotten Realms set was, like, our first set as a, as a play group, basically. Uh, we, we came in at Baldur's Gate and the first draft box we got with using tickets from Gen Con was a Forgotten Realms box. Yeah, because nice. it happened to be the one that was cheaper because it had been out for a while. Been a year old at that point, yeah. And it was like, oh, well, we're D&D people, so let's get the D&D set. And we were like, oh, this is really nice. Oh, we've got these Baldur's Gate decks that were already made for us. And like, oh, we'll play a couple games together like when we're bored at home. And then like a week later, it's like, Man, we played with these decks like two or three times now. Like, I feel like I could take some of these cards that we opened and like pull some out, put some other ones in, and we'll try it again. Oh yeah, that's mm-hmm. really fun. I kind of want to play with that color now. I've, I've got this card I could build around, but I need to buy some cards for it. So let's buy some. Card. Oh, there's a there's a new set coming, and then and then and, and then, then and then and then. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Here we are. Here we are. Highly recommend, by the way, if you're wanting to up the path. This. This episode of the podcast is not sponsored, but the Proxy Forge <laughs> proxies, I do want to say, are very nice. And as far as, like, upgrade paths go, like, you can get really good cards for not many dollars. And most people, unless they're, like, kind of mean and rude, are going to be like, ah, whatever. The art's yeah. cool. <laughs> like, mo- most pe- Unless you're entering in a tournament. <laughs> yeah. Fine. <laughs> well... So- I think every game or niche is going to have that toxic side of it, you know? And I feel like Mm -hmm. magic's Mm -hmm. one of those things that I've just heard so much about that it really prevents me from ever, like, going to my local game store and popping up a game of magic or something. Because you're like, yeah, uh, I want to still be able to ask questions. and (laughs) Absolutely. Go ahead. I I will say that, yeah, I will say that a lot of that is, I think, overblown. In a lot of regards, like when we've been at Gen Con or SCG Cons or been meeting up with strangers and playing like friends of friends and that kind mm-hmm. of stuff, everyone has always been very accommodating. I think there was you had one bad experience at the la not the not the SCG Con that just happened, but the one in the fall mm. where you just had a guy that was like, oh, yeah, I've got like a kind of powerful deck and then just like steamrolled everyone. Yeah. But beyond that. I feel like most people get that it's about just like playing the game and having a good time. So I, I don't, I, I'm not going to say that you're not going to meet those assholes and you're not going to play against those assholes, but chances are if you rolled up to say, what would, what's the next set? Murder Karlov Manor pre-release mm-hmm. at, at a local game store and you bought the kit and you made, you just made a little pre-release deck and then you played it there. Most people are going to be really chill about it. Probably. It's, we at least we're trying to foster that a little bit. <laughs> I was gonna say that's been one of my main focuses while we've been doing this whole thing is no matter what we're doing, you know, when we're on live or when we're just talking to the camera, it's being like it's trying to stay away from like, you know, um, uh, uh, being being mean about any particular play style, play style or thing, cards, decks, just the best. It- one of one of the YouTube channels that we used to watch a lot together, it's kind of kind of fallen off. Uh, the Whiskey Tribe, because we we enjoy we enjoy a whiskey. And one of their things is the best whiskey is the whiskey that you like to drink the way you like to drink it. And that mentality applies to so many other things. Like Absolutely. the best way to play Magic: The Gathering is the way you like to play it with the people you like playing it with. Mm-hmm. You know. Same for D&D. Same for D&D. Same for soon to be Relics Untold. <laughs> same to be for any other game. No, I demand you play Relics Untold my way. <laughs> no. Okay. I feel like that's like a copy paste statement I've had to have for so long because oh, yeah. you, you know how social media puts you in a box. If you oh. have something blow up, you're in a box now, and, and the only content's going to get views is in that box. And so, of course, we're, all we're of mine was slap each other's butts. <laughs> <laughs> we have two. We have two one million view videos. One of them is just us slapping each other's butts on beat, and the other one is saying, "Don't work out. Play D and D instead." And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, it was the digital tables, you know, videos that are like, yeah. "Okay, we yeah. get some views," and it's like, "You're killing imagination," and it's like. <sighs> 
I didn't create digital tables. I didn't create, you know, 3D printing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't see a lot of people combining the two when I started doing it, but I'm sure I didn't invent that either by any means. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely on the forefront of it, for sure. As far as like on socials, I feel like it definitely was one of the first ones kind of oh, yeah. out there. Um, but at the same time, it's like play however you want. Like this is yeah. not always our setup, right? Like we're not always mm -hmm. playing this way. And uh, if if you want to be super strict on your encumbrance and you know every step you take on the trail to get there, you know, and you're super methodical about how you play, that's cool. As long as everyone at your table is having fun, that's awesome. <laughs> Buy-in is a big thing. We we oh, we exclusively play in old one inch grid like white wet erase mats that are stained with all the colors from years yes. of play and then just single lines no detail <laughs> no nothing you want a boulder well there's a boulder there remember that mm -hmm. don't forget no. look <laughs> look look it's 2024 look, it is 2024 it is Did you realize it's 2024 it's 2024 um there's so much more creative you can do than back in the 1970s Right, and and we we were laughing about this last week because we we did our review podcast last week, and uh, of of twenty twenty three, and one of the stories we reported on was about uh, the group New TSR, <laughs> uh, who was trying to bring back the seventies style of of play, which was mostly um, including a lot of disparaging minority groups and and, and bad content and stuff like that. So bad. But the the thing is to say, uh, you know. They failed epically. They, uh, Randy, have you heard anything about that story? Mm -mm. Okay, so this, a lot of the old, like old, old original making D and D guys, like they had a team of like seven people. How much money do you think that company made, like top line before expenses? And in the beginning, existence. And this probably like, first not year much at all. A, a regular company. Uh, this is this is for reference. Of twenty twenty one. Yeah. Um, a, a few grand. I don't know. In that first year, I couldn't see it like popping off. <laughs> Were they in the hole? They made. They had for one. They had like four forty thousand dollars in loans. Which okay. I mean, you're starting a business. Okay. Yeah. They made six hundred dollars. After like the forty thousand loan, or just total, their, that's what they, they profited. Their income before any expenses was six hundred dollars. Woo! <laughs> I l listen, listen. The Dungeon Bros not a money making endeavor. No. Since we started, we've made more than six hundred dollars <laughs> doing this across all the various things. It's like that is sad. That is Absolutely. sad. So you know, maybe don't play D and D. The way in the seventies, yes, uh, not even not even seventies style D and D, just like obviously trying to stir the pot D and D. <laughs> you know, I feel like uh, people are different though too. Like, so you have a lot of folks that grew up gaming, right? So they're they're mm -hmm. used to a digital type experience. They're they're kind of used to a very driven game, right? It's not necessarily sandbox. It's more here's the storyline, here's how to follow it. Um, you have you know, like ADHD and stuff like that is more mm -hmm. yeah. common. And, you know, you have folks that really have a hard time not visualizing or being able to stay. So all of these things that are being incorporated are only just improving and getting more people involved. And, oh, yeah. uh, you know, I, I just love how much, it, like how far it's come, honestly. Oh, yeah. Even even just as the one running the game, it's nice to be able to, like, set up a mat, like, put some buildings out and put some walls in and, like, put all this accoutrement and, like, looks nice. And it's yes. like your little, like, you're playing with your action figures as a kid again. It's awesome. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's very fun. Like, I enjoy, I enjoy setting up battle mats just to make our stupid videos. And it's like, yeah, sure. I'll slap some walls down, I'll put some trees <laughs> up. And it's like, yeah, we'll put, a, we'll put a dragon in the middle and we'll like hang one person off of the dragon. And it's like, it's going to be fun. It's like a little diorama. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so let me ask you guys, and I don't know how you normally end your shows, oh. but we, we, we're talking D and D we're talking magic. So two, two part question. When oh you get to play, what's your, what's your, 
your main class. And then for magic, what's your like what's your go to color deck? Mm. Well, I have I have always been I have always been a proponent of the Ranger. Hmm. Always been a proponent of the Ranger. Even the original Ranger. Original the Power first Ranger? edition the yes, the Power <laughs> Ranger. The Power Ranger. The way Power I play the Ranger, Rangers. it is a power ranger for sure. Yeah. Because even the regular fifth edition before the Xanathar's updates with subclasses before the changes with Tasha's, just the straight up player's handbook, Hunter Ranger is mm -hmm. a good class. Just period. Slap sharpshooter onto that, you're good to go. And that is the one character that I am playing right now is mm -hmm. a sharpshooter Hunter Ranger, and it's awesome. I am bad at choosing favorites. Um, but. My longest care. I'll go with my longest term character, which is in a Star Wars fifth edition game, um, but it's the Paladin equivalent. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I think that's probably. I would say that would be the char the 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 character and the like style of play that I've enjoyed the most mm -hmm. up to this point. Those half casters, man. The half casters are where it's at for sure. Randy, you. Uh, so I, I don't know if it's. Um growing up in a overly religious family or what it what it was and and distancing i feel like a lot of people that go cleric which is my class have some yeah. kind of religious piece in the background you know and yeah. uh i think for me I, i've always been a, a like a dwarven cleric i love my dwarves i love my clerics i love being able because we're playing fantasy i want to have some magic right but at the same yeah. time i want to be able to whack some shit um oh so, yeah <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> so I want to be able to wield my war hammer and cast some magic, and I feel like best of both worlds. Clerics are. Oh great. yeah, the the Gish based classes, the swords and sorcery, man. It's yes. like it's the one that everyone goes to. Paladins, mm -hmm. Rangers, Hexblade, Warlocks, the whole vibe. Have at it. Yeah. In terms of magic, mm -hmm. I am a big fan of Jeskai decks. That's blue, red, and white specifically. This one right here in our set Enlightened Exile. She gives she gives all my people prowess. So whenever I cast a non-creature spell, they get plus one, plus one until the end of turn. Uh, and then when she attacks, I get to cast things from anyone's graveyard that's a non-creature spell, as long as the mana value is less than her power, which she also has prowess. So her that's power nice. can get up to like nine or ten, and I can free cast like a like a time stretch and get two extra turns from my graveyard. <laughs> annoying when he does that don't let him do that <laughs> i love it this uh, is my best deck i love it and my my best color combination or my, my combination is probably grixis blue black and red uh this is ash nod she lets me double my sacrifice triggers um grixis is kind of sometimes seen as the bad guy colors especially in like the universes beyond mm -hmm. um the, that was the uh, the Dalek Cyberman master deck in in the time in the Doctor Who. It was the Lord Sauron. of the Ring Sauron, Lord of the Ring, uh, in in Lord of the Rings. Um, but yeah, I like I like a lot of I like a lot of the blue, black, red draw cards, sacrifice stuff. I really like sacrificing my own stuff. You like sacrificing your stuff, and you like cheating them out of your graveyard. Re Aristocrat reanimation. That's that is that is very much your vibe. All right, you. Randy. Um, so I have limited experience, only a couple of years kind of playing, and that's here here and there. And I, I've played just about every color so far. And I have to say that my favorite has been like a blue-green deck. Uh, my favorite deck I play is with my um, Asai. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I, exactly. I love the whole landfall piece of it because I, too, oftentimes... Um, struggle with my hands and my land and <laughs> so to, <laughs> make sure i get those built up and uh be able to throw some big things out i i love mm. uh i really like the idea of a lot of red i like the aggression piece but i personally mm -hmm. am not as aggressive as i need to be for a red deck um because <laughs> i like I, to I like pull that. a little bit i like to build a wall and then be aggressive uh, i i have six decks with red in it <laughs> my favorite thing, and I was only kind of realizing this yesterday while playing, was my favorite thing, they, like, there's a lot of decks that, like, yeah, you, you commit to the board a lot, you build a lot, you put a lot of creatures out, green is especially, like, go big, red is 
you know, get a lot of things out, then swing. I'm like, okay, I'm going to, I want to just dawdle for like six turns. Like, yeah, I've just put like, you know, a couple of one ones out. Oh, here's, here's something. Here's like a, a one five that doesn't, that draws me some cards at the end step. Okay. Now I'm going to play like three cards and suddenly I have 14, 10, tens and now I'll swing out and kill everybody. Mm-hmm. I like to do nothing mm-hmm. for a while and then win. Yeah, I'm a big fan of uh, slinging the old spells, you know. Give me that yep. instant speed card draw, instant speed creature removal. Just cast as many of them as I can. And then prowess is probably the best keyword ability that's ever been made. I'm a very big fan of prowess. I'm going to have to look into it. <laughs> it sounds <Yeah>. awesome. <laughs> Man, it's bail- it, it, the big ones with prowess are are red, blue, and green, or red, blue, and white. There's a lot of very powerful. Th- One of my favorite cards, the the monastery mentor. The I believe it's two and a white for a two two with prowess. And then whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, you create a one one monk also with prowess. And so you're casting things, and then it becomes bigger. And then every time you cast something, you get another one, and you get another one, and you get another one, and s- forever. It's really great. It's really great. Whenever I play, whenever I play Narset, I'm very quickly targeted the moment that I cast her. <laughs> yes, yes, you are. <laughs> She's dangerous. She's dangerous. Well, Randy, we've been going for a little over an hour now. This has been a wonderful, yeah. wonderful conversation. Had a fun time hanging out. Absolutely. With you. Yeah. Thanks for Thank having you. me. Yeah. It's been awesome. We appreciate. It. Is there anything that you want to to pimp any socials? Where can people find you if they really like your the cut of your jib? <laughs> so I am uh, found as the Forged Realm on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, all the socials. Not YouTube yet. I haven't I haven't dabbled into that yet. YouTube, hey, different. YouTube is where YouTube is where the money is. YouTube that's, where that's what I hear. Work. And not even not even necessarily like the ad sense because you don't you don't like even TikTok you get paid for views like YouTube you get paid for views. It's not it's more but it's not like a lot. It's just where you have the opportunity to actually grow in a meaningful way. Like, I would, one million percent, I would trade all forty thousand of our TikTok followers for forty thousand subscribers on YouTube, easily. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's so much more valuable over there. It's a whole thing. I would highly recommend getting into that. That's one of our things. I'm trying to make YouTube videos again. So, so far, coming we're... soon on YouTube, the Forge Realm. <laughs> Well, the Forge Realm coming we soon, and uh, we'll subscribe. I, absolutely, absolutely. One of our one of our TikTok friends, Typical Gemini, has been doing MTG deck techs on on YouTube, and those have started to do really well. He's over a thousand subscribers already. He's beaten us. Yeah, <laughs> what an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> we have a word with him. <laughs> well, we're gonna go do that right now. So, Randy, again, thank you so much for coming on, and uh, we'll talk to you hopefully soon. Hopefully, very yes. soon. We need to meet up absolutely. at Gen Con. Yes, that'd be great. Awesome. Thank you very much. See you guys.